Hello, I'm Jeff Ellis, and this is a short video I'm making on how to letter using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, so I've got my comic page already pulled up. There's no speech balloons on here right now, and I want to add them using Adobe Illustrator. Um, currently, uh, in my document, I have two layers. I got a layer for my letters, which is currently empty, and then I've got my image layer here. So I'm going to focus on getting the lettering in on the first panel here. And so in my letters layer, I'm going to grab my oval tool and click and drag and create an oval. Now this oval shape is going to be my speech balloon. Um, so before I um, do too much more here. I'm just going to set up my uh, speech balloon style. Uh, so I want my speech balloon to obviously have white fill, black stroke. Uh, I'm going to go to the strokes panel for a second. I'm going to go a little thicker to up to two points, not three points. We'll go rounded caps, rounded corners. And then just so we can pull this style up multiple times, I know it's a small thing. But I'm going to go to the graphic styles panel and I'm going to save this as a graphic style. So this way, anytime I apply the graphic style, my balloons are going to end up uh, looking consistent. So they'll have the same stroke setting, same fill color, etc. So that's my style setup. Now I'm going to make a little modification to this uh, balloon. So I find that uh, the default oval, it's like a little bit sort of too narrow on the sides. Uh, I don't want it to be a perfect circle, but I want it to be maybe a little bit rounder. So I want to bring the, the sides in just a little bit like that. Um, so um, you can use your direct select tool and you can grab your points and you can pull them in like this. Um, another way you can do it is if you um, direct select those two points you leave the top and the bottom not selected you got those sides selected there you can use your transform function and you can scale maybe about 90 percent and that'll bring those two points in just a little bit um, if you want them to be a little bit more uneven that's where you can use your direct select um, so to customize it a little bit um, at this point, I've got my speech balloon shape or my speech bubble shape here established. Um, we can still scale it if we want. Um, now I need to put the tail in, so I'm going to grab my pen tool and start from somewhere in the center of the bubble. I'm going to drop in a point, put another point pointing towards the character's mouth, and I'll click and drag, and I'm going to pull a little curve. Now I'll just switch to my selection tool and in my uh, my graphic styles panel I'm just going to apply my graphic style just in case uh, that styles didn't already go across and I'm just going to turn off the fill. There's my tail line and then on the toolbar here I'm going to grab the width tool. Using the width tool I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to pull a little width out of here. You can make it as thick or as thin as you like with the width tool. Uh, I'm going to go not too thick. So there's my tail. So we want these things to be um, our speech balloon. So I'm going to make a couple quick adjustments here. Um, so first things first, I'm going to uh, use my object arrange function. Uh, the shortcut for this is shift command bracket. I'm going to bring that to the front and then I'm going to select both of those shapes and command G group. Now that they're in a group I'm going to go to my effects menu and there is a function under here called Pathfinder add and if I do that it looks like I merged them in Pathfinder but they're still separate objects. So the nice thing about that is this is going to move like a single object, so I could position this anywhere on the artboard. But if I double click on it, 
I can actually move the tail independent of the bubble and I can adjust the bubble independent of the tail and if I double click on the tail itself I can even edit the position of the tail and I even use the width tool to edit the tail and then if I go back I still have my balloon here right? so I like this just because it gives me a lot more flexibility right I can even use the width tool on the group here and I can use my direct select tool to adjust the curve so that kind of gives me a lot of flexibility but it's still gonna move like a single object here right so there's my speech balloon now I'm probably gonna want to put some words in here obviously and um, something I found that's uh, kind of handy is to use the bubble itself to give you the the shape you want frame shape uh, for the words so I'm gonna copy this oval um, so I went in with isolation mode to just select the uh, oval independent of the tail um, command C to copy and then well, now that I'm out I'm gonna double click to or push escape to get out of isolation mode well now that I'm out of isolation mode I paste there's my exact copy of my bubble here um, and of course what I can do now is get my type tool and if I click on the edge of that shape that creates a text bubble so you can see all the words are inside the bubble shape and obviously we don't want our words touching the edge here and this is where you can shrink your shape down just a little bit and you've got your words floating just a little bit on the inside Now, when you first create a text box in Illustrator, it uses that uh, default lorem ipsum text. So in this case, uh, I've got my script off screen here. I'm just gonna copy the text and make sure I select all the text that's here. Command A and Command V paste. So this has my type. Now obviously for a comic book uh, in a speech balloon, we usually want our uh, text to be centered so under the paragraph settings I can set this to uh, centered type um, and in my uh, font settings um, I can go and find uh, whatever comic book uh, comic book relevant font I want to use um, so let's go for um, I'll use one of my uh, one of my comic craft. Uh, let's use um, face front. Okay, so I'll put that in here. Um, now, right now this is uh, twelve point. Um, for print, that's probably pretty pretty readable. Um, if I was going to the web, we could go a little bit bigger. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll just err on the side of caution. I'll go a little bit bigger here. Or I'll go for like 14 point type. Um, you know, if you uh, click on the character uh, panel, you can get all your options here. Um, another shortcut to pull up your character options is Command T. Um, so that's going to give you um, your character panel. And um, Right now this is uh, face front 14 point. So generally 14 point type means you're gonna want 16 point letting. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'll show you guys a couple a couple more tricks here. Now I've got to adjust uh, the type itself, but we can see right now that the text is kind of hugging the top of the um, uh, of the shape here so if we want to um, so this is basically area type 
um, this this text in a shape here. So in my type menu, we can go to our area type options, and right now we've got um, our um, different alignment settings. Um, so let's align center. Um, I know it says horizontal align center, but you can see that that um, actually makes it a little more centered inside of the, the shape itself. Um, we don't really need to do any, any uh, inset spacing. Um, inset spacing would, would be like putting a little bit of padding around the shape itself, but we're gonna let the shape kind of create its own padding. Uh, so I'll say, uh, just, just adjusting the alignment to center um, text is going to be a little more centered in that in that space there uh, and I might compress my uh, bubble shape a little bit more um, obviously the, the the bubble itself is gonna have to adjust but I'm gonna build my um, my word shapes and I can adjust the bubble around that um, so right now I've got my text here um, so this is kind of my baseline uh, basically like my body copy here uh, before I do too, too much else, again, just to make this a little easier on the next speech balloon, uh, I'm going to go down to my um, uh, type options, and they have a little thing here called paragraph styles. And in paragraph styles, similar to the graphic styles from earlier, with paragraph styles, I can save a paragraph style. And so I can call this, uh, you know, uh, I'll just call this body copy. Basically, all my regular words will be using this body copy style. And I'll just double click and open this up. So basically, this is saving my font properties. Um, so again, if I do type somewhere, this paragraph style is going to bring this style across. Now, if I wanted to put some emphasis on something like where he's um, you know, snorting a little bit at the start here, this puffed sound effect here, um, that um, I might want to make a little bit different. Um, so in this case, I might create a character style. Um, so I'll create a character style and I'll call it emphasis. And for this character style, um, right now it has no properties, but what I could do with something like this is set the style. Um, so let's pull up our uh, comic or, or, or uh, our CC uh, face front here if we can yeah um, and then we could say maybe that'll be bold italic and so I'll say okay and then if I apply my emphasis that will be bold italic so this way if you wanted to put emphasis on a specific word um, right we can do that with our emphasis point. And you know, if, if uh, it being like italic, maybe it seems a little bit, maybe like a little bit shorter. Um, emphasis would also, um, we could go into our character style here and um, you know, we could set a specific uh, point size. Maybe I'd make it 15 points so it's a little bit bigger. Um, so that's, a fun way to sort of save some of your character styles. Um, now, right now, I would say this is probably reading a little too wide. You normally want to create that um, that kind of nice diamond shape uh, to your typography. Um, so I could adjust the shape itself uh, by pulling in the width and maybe stretching out the height. Um, so that's one way that I can I can adjust this. Um, if you wanted to put any line breaks in, um, you could do shift return to do some line breaks. But um, you know, if, if you're happy with the shape here, you can kind of use that as the basis for your, um, your lettering. And um, obviously this balloon's a little too big right now. So I'm gonna shrink that down just a tiny bit. in a little bit, there we go. Yeah, let's 
it's looking pretty good. So like I say, I can I can adjust that. And yeah, it probably needs to be a little smaller still. There we go. And again, if I wanted to edit, right, they're all individual pieces. And then I can even just adjust the stroke size a little bit to slim that whole thing down. Okay, so there we go. There is my first speech balloon dropped in. And the nice thing about um, this method here is I've created these graphic styles and these character styles as I go, um, which is going to make it a lot easier uh, for the next time I need to put a speech balloon in. So I hope that that was a useful demonstration on how to use Adobe Illustrator to do your lettering. Um, I'm going to do some future videos on some other tips and tricks using the Adobe Suite and Clip Studio Paint. Um, if you like this video, uh, please uh, like and subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, maybe think about uh, becoming a, a, subs a subscriber on Patreon or Ko-fi. Uh, your your uh, support is going to help me make more of these videos. Um, so this has been uh, my lettering tutorial. Um, hope, hope that was helpful. Let me know uh, if you uh, have any thoughts or if that was useful to you.